hello friends welcome back i am shashwat singh and in this video i am going to talk about switch mode power supplies in the previous video i explained linear power supplies so if you haven't seen it i suggest you to see that before proceeding ahead so today we will study what an smps is different blocks involved in it and the functioning of each block we will also learn why and when to choose smps over linear power supplies and its pros and cons so let's start first let's see what an smps or a switch mode power supply is as the name suggests it is a device used to supply power to any electrical load with some switching action involved we will see in the following slides what this switching action is and why is it used for so let's see why we should go for switch mode power supplies as we saw earlier linear power supplies become very bulky with increase in its current ratings so we needed something which will allow us to handle large amount of current without taking a lot of space and here smps came as a solution switch mode power supplies work on very high frequencies as compared to linear power supplies and as you are aware that the size of transformer reduces with an increase in frequency and hence reducing the overall size of an smps so when going for large current ratings smps is a preferred option also we will see that the efficiency of an smps is far better than linear power supplies which makes it superior okay now let's move to the next slide and see the different blocks of an smps there are five basic blocks in an smps the first one is input rectifier and filter this block rectifies the input coming ac from the mains and converts it to dc the second block is a chopper this block is used to convert the dc signal into a pulsating dc wave this wave now goes to the third block that is a transformer which then steps down the voltage to the required level this is now finally applied to the output rectifying unit which is then filtered to obtain a constant dc output voltage the feedback circuit helps to maintain the output voltage to a desired value okay let's now move further and look at its complete working as we saw smps works at high frequencies so we need to convert the 50 hertz mains into a high frequency signal as we cannot directly convert or increase the frequency of an ac signal we first convert it into a dc wave after that this signal is chopped or sampled at a very high frequency to obtain a pulsating dc wave this signal is then made to step down to a desired level using a transformer then it is applied to the rectifying and filtering unit to obtain a constant dc output the feedback helps to maintain the level of output voltage okay now let's move and see the block diagram for better understanding so this is the block diagram of an smps as we can see the first block takes the ac mains and converts it into a dc signal following it is the chopper with typical frequencies of 25 to 50 kilohertz this frequency is set up about the human audible range to avoid the audible noise i it produces a dc pulsating wave these are the waveforms at its different stages the transformer now steps down the pulsating dc signal and is applied to the output rectifying and filter circuit to get a constant dc output like this now coming to the output circuit, feedback circuit the output sensor of the feedback unit senses the output voltage and then compares it with the reference voltage the error voltage is then used to control the chopping frequency if the output is found to be more than the required value the chopping frequency is decreased reducing the total output power and thus reducing the output voltage similarly if the output is found to be less than the required voltage the chopping frequency is increased and hence the final voltage level is maintained the isolation unit is used to separate the high current from damaging the primary side circuitry this is how an smps works finally 
let's look at some of its pro, pros and cons and SMPS has many advantages some of it are listed here firstly it is small in size as explained earlier due to high frequency of operation the size of the transformer re decreases reducing the overall size the second is low noise as the operating frequency is above the human audible range the noise cannot be heard by us the most important is its high efficiency SMPS uses the switching technique so instead of dissipating the excess power as heat it continuously switches its input to control the output power contrary to what happens in linear power supplies this increases the overall efficiency of SMPS now let's look at some of its cons SMPS has higher complexity as it involves so many stages of operation lastly one of its major drawback is that it works at high frequencies which causes generation of EMI which can damage other sensitive instruments okay friends I think this is enough for this topic I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I will be making more videos on basics of stuff in future. So please do like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel and write any queries you have in the comment section below. Thank you.